So questions from the homework. Number four, Amy, first of all, it says show that this could be the first three teams of a geometric series. What they're really saying is, um, is R the same from here to here to here? How can I find R always? You remember? Uh, I think you thought it right and said it wrong. It's not the first one and divide it. It's any term divided by the one in front of it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go 8x to the negative one-third divided by 4x to the four-thirds. That's R. And this is great exponent review. Negative exponent, Amy, I say to you, elevator. Instead of a, po a negative one-third on the top, I'm going to move it to the bottom. This is going to be, first of all, what's 8 divided by 4, Amy, on top? This is going to move to the bottom. Instead of four-thirds on the bottom, I think I'm going to have five-thirds on the bottom. Is that okay? Now, to prove that this sequence is geometric, I also need to show that this gives me, look up, that this is going to give me the same r. If it is, then I know, oh, you're multiplying by the same r over and over. It's geometric. So I'm going to go 16x to the negative 2 divided by 8x to the negative 1 third. Let's see if that also gives me 2 over x to the 5 thirds. Well, 16 over 8, I got a 2. Negative exponent, Amy, remember elevator trick? I'm going to move it to the bottom. And a negative exponent down here, I'm going to move it to the top. Okay? What's my denominator up here? I'd like to write 2 as a fraction over 3. I think 2 is the same as 6 over 3, is it not? How many x's on top? One third. How many x's on the bottom? Six thirds. How many left and where? Oh, are these two r's actually the same? Okay, so it is a geometric series. That's step one. Oh, and if x equals 8, so r is going to be 2 all over 8 to the 5 thirds. Okay. By the way, this is meant to be a tough question, curveball. So, like, I'm glad you asked this. Two divide. Oh, let me see my screen. Two divided by eight to the power of. I better put that five thirds in brackets because there's two numbers in the exponent, and anytime there's two number brackets. I guess if x equals eight, r is one sixteenth. Is that a fraction between negative 1 and positive 1? Does the sum to infinity exist then? Will this convert? Yes. Oh, let's find it. Now, 1 minus r is going to be 1 minus 1 over 16. What's a? What's the first term? Just read it to me. Oh, but what did they say x was in this part b? Amy, what did they say x was? A. Okay, so I guess a is going to be uh, 4 times 8 to the power of 4 thirds. Oh, a is 64. Can you take it from there? That's going to be the infinite sum. That would be how they could say, okay, so much of this is straight plug and chug. What kind of curveball can we throw at them? And they love to, with series and sequences, do algebraic ones. Ooh. What's x? There's my first term. Put an 8 in for the x. There. Straight calculator. Is that okay? Right? That's the sequence. That uh, It's got x's, but they can tell me whatever x value they want me to try. They could have said, hey, let x be 2. They picked 8, by the way, because you can take the cube root of 8. Can you see all the fractions? Their thirds and thirds was the same as cube rooting. So they probably wouldn't have used a 2, but an 8 would certainly work. Any others? Okay. Then, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time that we started the last lesson of the course. Yes, we're there at long last. Can you please turn to lesson four, which is page 191? Page 191. Vitaly, you with me? No. You sure? No. So you can put whatever you're looking at away? No. Otherwise, it will be with me for quite some time. Okay. It's called sigma notation. And what this is, is a shorthand shortcut for a lot of information. Put your pencils down and look up. Supposing I wanted you to do this. Supposing I wanted to give you the following instructions. Starting with a 5. Screen still frozen? Sorry, I thought I hit I did hit that. I guess the remote's dying. Supposing I wanted to give you the following instructions. Starting with a 5 using a common ratio ratio of 2 add together the first 16 terms that's way too much writing for those instructions dina if you've learned one thing in math you've learned that we like shorthand notation all right here is what sigma notation looks like. The first thing that I would do is I would say, Doug, my friend, they want me to add together. There is a symbol in math that tells me to add together, and it's this. I've pulled it out in physics a few times, and you may have seen it in other courses, because in English we've treated that as the sum of. Now, actually, I write it like this. In type font, it's actually this. <coughs> and that's what it'll appear in our typewritten notes. But when you're handwriting it, it's a capital M on its side if you're really going to be in a rush. It's sort of a E meets Z, sort of. That symbol there tells any math nerd, you're going to add some numbers together. Okay? Starting with the what? Five. What's R here? Two to the N minus one. Does that part look a little bit familiar? Can you see AR to the N minus one? Okay. How would I tell the person to add together the first 16 terms? This is the second part of sigma notation. I would say starting with n equals 1, stop when you get to 16. That very concise notation right there tells a math nerd, hey, plug in a 1 to this equation, plug in a 2, plug in a 3, plug in a 4, plug in a 5, Stop when you get to 16 and add up all those numbers. That's all sigma notation is. It's a shorthand. And you have to memorize what means what. But I always show this first. Now we're going to jump into the particular lesson. So lesson four. Consider this. 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128 plus 256. That's a lot of writing. Is there a shorter way to write this? In this lesson, we're going to introduce a new notation, which enables us to write the series in a very abbreviated form. It's called sigma notation. In the Greek alphabet, the letter that thing, sigma, which is where our capital letter S comes from. That part of it looks like an S. Over the years, they stopped doing that, and it became a capital letter S, in case you're wondering, is used to represent the sum of a series. The example below 
represents 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus it represents this. Let's see. Here's what this says. Here is my equation that I'm going to evaluate. Now this one is not in the form a r to the m minus 1. That's okay. And they're using a k. You can use any letter that you want to. But the sigma mat means I'm going to add up each term. And k starts with 1 means to write this out, I would put a 1 there. What's 2 to the 1? 2. And then I would just keep increasing this number, stopping when I get to 8. So I would have what's 2 to the 2? 4. What's 2 to the 3? 8. Dot, dot, dot. What's 2 to the 8? 256. And you can see, oh, it does write that out, but way shorter. You can put any kind of an equation here that you want. Usually, we'll try and do a geometric series because that's this unit. You read this as the sum of 2 to the k from 1 to 8, or the sum from 1 to 8 of 2 to the k. We call this the upper limit. We call this the lower limit. And here's the general term. Uh, note. Vitaly, k is a natural number. You're going up by ones, not by decimals. But the variable k is arbitrary. They'll often use k or n or i. i for index, n for number, and k for constant, spelled with the k for some stupid reason. But you can use whatever letter you want. Okay? So it says, write this series in expanded form and determine the sum... Actually, we're going to do a different one. Are you ready? Do your little summation sign. K equals 3 to 6 of 5 bracket 3 to the n minus 2. By the way, Three to six. How many terms do you think there's going to be in this series? David, four, not three. Let's see if you're right. How many terms do you think there is? You know what? If there's only four, I'm not going to get fancy. I'm just going to write them out and add them up on my calculator. So what's the first term? I would put a three right there. Do you know what's three take away two? What's three to the one? Three times five. The first term is 15. I put a plus sign because that's what this symbol tells me to do. The sigma means separate them with plus signs. What comes after 3? 4. Put a 4 right there, Matt. What's 4 take away 2? 3 squared times 5. The second term is 45 plus. Put a 5 right there. Adam, what's 5 take away 2? 3 to the third is? times 5, 135, I think, yes. By the way, can you see a pattern in the numbers here too? What are we multiplying each term by, it seems? 3, it seems. So I'm willing to bet the next term is going to be 135 times 3. That's going to get me when uh, 6. 6 take away 2 is 4. I would go to my calculator. 3 to the 4th times 5. The final term is 405. David, how many numbers are there? Yeah. You know how many numbers there always are? This minus that plus 1. What's the answer? Add them up. 600 and what? 600 even? Oh, wow. That's sigma notation. When you see it, you look at the initial index, you put that in wherever it's as a variable, and you keep incrementing by 1, writing out each term separated by plus signs. Now, Jen, if instead, don't write this down, they had done that, first of all, how many terms would there be? Not 13. 14. You know what I would do? I would write out the first couple. Hey, that's A. R is 3. And I could use my S formula from two days ago as a shortcut. 
But you know what? If there's five or less, I'll just write them out and add them up because that way I know I'm doing it right. <coughs> Next page. Okay. Write the series represented by this in expanded form and determine the sum. Okay. What's my index k going to be the first time? k equals 5. Put a 5 right there. What's 5 plus 1? 6. The first term is going to be 5 times 2 to the 6th. 320. And what I usually tend to do, Brett, just so I can keep track, is above it I'll write the index and just underline it. That's when k is 5. Plus, Brett, what comes after 5? So the second term is going to be putting a 6 right here. What's 6 plus 1? It's going to be 5 times 2 to the 7th. You know what the second term is? And you said that's when k was 6. I'll also do k is 7. I'll also do k is 8. How do I know to stop when k is 8, Elizabeth? Because that's the upper bound. That's what this notation means. Uh, k is 7 is going to give me 5 times 2 to the 8, 1280. And k is 8 is going to give me 5 times 2 to the 9th, whoop, to the 9th, 2560. What is the expanded sum when I add them up? Plus 1280, plus 640. Plus 320. 4,800? Yes? How many terms are there in this series? Four? How can you find the number of terms? It's always the upper limit. Take away the lower limit. Plus one! That's a great multiple choice question, by the way. It shows up quite often, Amrit. They'll give you something like this, and they'll say, hey, how many terms? And you know what they'd have for their answers? Three, four, the correct answer, eight, or five. Because some kids just pick a number that shows up anywhere in the question. All right. Let's see if we can write a series in sigma notation. Draw the little funky boom, boom, boom. I really should draw it neater. There. How many terms are there? Count. Six? Is there? So let's go from, uh, let's use k just for the heck of it. k equals one to six. Does that mean there's going to be six terms? What's six take away one? Plus one is bigger minus smaller plus one, so it works. If I have a choice, Vitaly, I like to start at one, although you could start with any number you wanted to. You just get a different equation inside the sigma than I did. <clears throat> take a look at this sequence, though. This is a special sequence. This is geometric. What's R? How can I always find R? Any term divided by the one in front of it. How do I divide by a fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal. I heard it back there. What did you say R was? Oh, keep going. R is going to be 3 over 2 times 1 third, because dividing by 3 is the same as timesing by 1 third. Do the 3's cancel? Yeah? R is a half. What's A? 3. Here is the shortcut for the geometric sigma notation. Put your pencil down, look up. Remember this? Remember that from two classes, lessons ago? Three lessons ago. It still works.
that's the easiest way to set up a series and write it in sigma notation. Use the a r to the n minus 1 as your template. Uh, but Kelvin, to do that, make sure you start from 1 and go to 6. Okay. So, don't write this down. Ten plus forty plus hundred and sixty plus six hundred and forty plus one more, uh, six hundred and uh, two thousand five hundred and sixty. Is that times by what's R here? Four. How many terms? the sum from n equals 1 to 5, I'll use n just for the heck of it, of a bracket r to the n minus 1. That's that written in sigma notation. Pardon me? How can I make sure that n is equal to 1? I, I just made that one up. I could write this a different way. I could go, if I wanted to, Kelvin... For, oh, I could go if I wanted to from n equals 2 to 6. What's 6 take away 2? 4 plus 1. So 5 terms. But you know what? For that to work, I think I'd need an n minus 2 right there. Different equation. It works, though. I could go from like 17 to something. You know what? If you have a choice, start with 1. And it fits our normal template already. Example 4. Now in example 4, are they starting with 1? No, 0. I'll be careful. And in example 4, Jordan, in example 4, how many terms are there in example 4? You guys with me? Yes? I don't know what you're doing. Okay, with me? Brett, how many terms are there in example 4? It's a trick question. K goes from 0 to what? Ah, this is an infinite sum like we did last day. First of all, when they give me an infinite sum, when they give me any sigma, you know what I always do? I write out the first three terms because I can always spot the pattern from that. So you ready? I'm just going to write out. Now, Brett, when K is 0, what's 1 third to the 0 power? What's anything to the 0 power? 1 times 5, 5. That's the first term. Plus, when k is 1, I'd have 1 third times 5. Yes? By the way, I'm pretty sure this is going to be r. Almost always what's inside the exponent is r. Plus, when k is 2, I'd have 1 ninth, right? 1 third squared which would give me 5 over 9 when I multiply it. I'm just going to go like that and see if I can spot the pattern. First question. What's R? You can find it, Nick, two ways. Any term divided by the one in front of it, but I think you're going to find R is 1 third. If you're doing sigma notation and there's a number and the index is the exponent, that's your R. Here's my question, Nick. Is this a fraction between negative 1 and positive 1? Will this infinite sum exist? Moving over 1. Vitaly, is this a fraction between negative 1 and positive 1? Will this infinite sum exist? Yes or no? And how do I know instantly without having to think about it, assuming I've done the homework from last day? What if it was this? What was our test to see if a sum to infinity, which is what this is, existed? How did we know instantly? The ratio, what about the ratio? Had to be a fraction. 
between zero and one. So I'm coming back to you, Nick, my friend. What's R? Does the infinite sum exist? Why? Yes. So I can continue. What's A? That's why I wrote out the first three terms, Jen, so I could spot A easier. How can I find an infinite sum? Last day. The, in the answer to this guy is going to be 5 all over. Dan, in your head, what's 1 minus 1 third? Yeah. How do I divide by a fraction, flip it, and multiply? I think it's going to be 15 over 2 or 7.5. So I can take sigma notation, Dylan, and I can crank an infinite sum from last day out of there too. I just have to be careful. I always write out the first three terms just to make sure I know what A is. A is usually the number in front. Not always. Usually. R is usually the exponent. Number? Not always. And it takes all of, what, 30 seconds to plug K in three times and get the, those three, and then I know. Dina is scrunching her face looking at example five. And the reason Dina is scrunching her face looking at example five is example five is actually from the Alberta curriculum. So the very last question of this year, we're going to take our pencils or our pens and we're going to go, no, 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 no. Number one. You know what? Let's do number one together right now. Number one says state the number of terms. How many terms in this series right here? Six. How many terms in this series right here? It's going to be 32 take away 17 plus one. 32 take away 17 is 15 plus one. 16. <clears throat> I like question C. I like question C. I like question C. How many terms in this series here? It's going to be A plus 9, take away A plus 1. What is that really, Matt? 10. See it? The A's cancel. And by the way, that looks so terrifying when kids see that on the provincial for the first time. The number of kids that pan... No! No! It's always the top minus the bottom plus one. And in this case, oh, the A's canceled. Yeah, 10. Okay. 2A. But cross out the middle. Whoop. Cross out that. 2A, part one and three. Write it out in expanded form. How many terms will there be? Six. And then add them up. C and D. Logs? Yes, logs. Number three it says write each series in summation notation, which rhymes conveniently. I'll go A and C. Gonna skip four. Skip five. Skip seven. Nine is nice. Eight is nice. Ten is nice. By the way, eight and ten, it's a little bit of review of logarithms. Are we almost at the end of the course? So I'm sticking some of that in now. Okay? 
What else is your homework? Okay, short lesson. Okay. What else is your homework? I think you can also now, we're done the course, if you finish this homework, make sure you're caught up, do the series and sequences homework. This is also a good chance for you to do a little bit of review. Maybe go through the written section of one of the five provincial exams that I, four provincial exams that I gave you the other day. When is your series and sequences unit test? Tuesday. Next class. Next time I see you. The test, the multiple choice will be series and sequences, eight or ten questions in all likelihood. The written is going to have, are you ready? Are you ready? <sighs> A quadratic trig. Not an identity. I'll do identities later. Transformations. Um, blah, blah, blah. Either reciprocal or something with uh, expansions, compressions, reflections, and slides with all of them. Remember the order? Okay. So that's transformations. That's trig. What am I going to do for logarithms? I think for logarithms, it's going to be an exponential equation, something like this. And I'm making this one up. Something like 8 equals 3 bracket 5 to the 2x plus 1. Okay? Uh, divide by 3 to get the exponent by itself and then take the log of both sides. And you'll end up having to muck around with that. Okay? I know. It means you need to do some review. Okay? Uh, that was transformations. That was trig. That was logs. Yeah, I'll put one combinatorics, probably a committee question. Ten boys, five girls, picking five people. How many ways to get exactly three boys and two girls? How many ways to get at least three boys and two girls? That'll be the written. Okay. I think I answered that already. All right. So that'll kind of jog your memory. I really think it'd be worthwhile sometime this weekend to navigate to the PIP math to where it says principles of math 12 links to where it says click here for video tutorials like stuff and uh, if you're shaky on a couple of units watch some of the tutorials what I'm really trying to do is give you a mini mock on the written so that the real thing isn't as shocking all right I have one more thing I have to do before I turn you loose.